Um, thank you for having me here. I've been um, very uh, excited about being invited to participate in this. Um, I've been planning for it uh, uh, ever since I, I, I got asked to to give a talk. Um, so I've been working on this for for you know keeping my my eyes and my ears open just to you know in my media consumption to see the the interesting the uh, disappointing things that I've noticed in the in the the role that American uh, journalism has played in in covering the pandemic. Um, I thought of uh, other topics such like as, as Chinese media, but I don't speak Chinese and I don't really look at Chinese media, but I do consume a lot of, of American and, and British and Canadian media. So I thought this would be a much better focus on that. Um, yeah, uh, and before I begin and go into details, I just want to kind of give the outline of the scope of what I'm talking about. Um, and a lot of, there's been a lot of criticism against a lot of American journalism, but there, it's more about Fox News and how Fox News is covering uh, the pandemic and uh, Fox News always apologizing for Trump and supporting whatever Trump is doing and things like that. There's other networks and uh, news journalism in the United States that's supporting, that's like being against uh, lock, stat, lockdown and uh, self-quarantine and supporting protests against it, right? Uh, so those, that's not what I'm talking about. That's, that's a whole other issue to talk about. Uh, the right wing and conspiracy media, how they're covering it. Um, I'm more interested in covering how mainstream media uh, is, is covering the pandemic um, because, you know, we still have this idea that mainstream media is supposed to be very responsible and very neutral uh, and very professional about it when it's just very easy to criticize Fox News for doing something, right? So that's why I thought the uh, focusing on this mainstream center left kind of media would be a, would be a lot more interesting. Um, you know, I don't, in me personally, I, I don't really read Fox news that much. I'll see when people talk about Fox news, but it, it's not, you know, it's like I said, it's just too easy to criticize Fox news. It's, it's, you know, more of a propaganda network for, for Trump than anything. So it's, I, so let's just look at the real journalists, the ones who win prizes and the ones who everybody is, is praising for being uh, proper journalists. Let's look at these organizations and see how they're doing in the pandemic, right? Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is, you know, we have to really differentiate between the things that, that journalists are doing, the things that journalists can control and the things they can't control, right? Because a lot of the criticism I see for journalism is they go, well, that's not really the journalist's fault. Like, that, you know, we have to look at the things that the journalists are actually doing, right? So I want to kind of separate those things out, right? Um, because we need to think about when we're looking back at this, this crisis from many perspectives, it's from the, the journalistic perspective or social welfare or economics or whatever, right? We need to look, we, we need to use our foresight. We need to think, well, you know, what do we need to do to prevent this kind of thing in, in the future from getting out of hand, right? It's easy to look back and say, oh, wow, we should have done this and journalists should have done that, right? But we need to say, well, what, we already should have been doing things in a certain way, right? When this whole situation started, we should have been running our society and running our media system and running our health system in such a way to prevent these kinds of global pandemics from destabilizing economies and putting people out of work and killing, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, right? So that's what we want to say is we should have the kind of uh, society and media system and journalism that will help prevent this kind of thing, right? We, it's so easy to go back and say, oh, well, we should have had more masks or tests or something and say, yeah, but why didn't we have that, right? So that, that's the perspective I want to say, like why, what journalism should already have been doing when this started, right? Uh, the other aspect is, you can't, you know, the, the way that the specifics of this virus and the specifics of this pandemic are, are very specific, they're very unique. So we have to, you know, the, the way that the, the actual nature of the virus itself, it really affects how we, we journalists can cover it and how journalists can learn about it, right? So we have to think about the, the nature of it, right? Journalists can't control, right? There's long incubation periods and it's highly transmittable and we don't, we kind of still figuring out how it's transmitted and there's many asymptomatic carriers and 
all these expressions that we didn't know three or four months ago, right? Um, these are phrases and concepts that journalists also have had to learn over the while. And, and even uh, I'll talk about later about medical journalists, right? But even just general journalists in the, in the general public had to kind of learn all of these concepts. So, you know, it's fair enough to say that, that we didn't understand it very well, right? Because it's a new thing, right? We don't talk about these. This is a new way to talk about a new kind of disease, right? Um, and the scientific information we have is continuing to change and continue, continuing to develop. And there's scientists around the world that are still discovering new things about it, right? There's reports yesterday in the news, like they, they're testing people who died in November who have the virus in France and in, in different places. And you go, wow, like, obviously journalists would have no idea about that. So we can't really criticize them for that kind of an issue, right? Um, and then we have to look at, um, you know, the, the sources of information that journalists get, right? I will talk about this in more detail. A lot of them are not very honest, right? Uh, I'll give lots of examples from Trump and he's obviously lying a lot about this to try and make himself look better. But if that's your source of information, then it's really difficult to, to validate that, right? Um, and maybe you're looking for a medical expert to give you information, but maybe they're not an epidemiologist, they're not a virologist. Maybe they study other kinds of diseases and they don't really know uh, about this topic as well as other sources would. So the journalists can't really control that. They, they can try to find better sources, uh, but in an, um, you know, in an emerging situation like this, it's not that easy for to suddenly have a whole network of different uh, sources than you're used to having, right? So those are the things that I'm not going to talk about. You know, so I spend five minutes talking about what I'm not going to talk about. Right? Um, yeah, what I am going to talk about is um, the infamous uh, press conferences from the uh, apparently soon to be ending <laughs> coronavirus task force uh, that uh, President Trump and, and, uh, and Pence and all of them are running. Um, I'll give some examples of, of false balance, which is a topic um, I've, I've studied quite a lot and researched um, and, and taught about it. Um, I'll look at the reporting of statistics and some issues with that. Um, and like I mentioned, the basic lack that in the news media of having reporters dedicated to covering medical issues. Um, and then finally, fact-checking disingenuous sources, as I say, which again is examples from Trump and, and Pompeo and people like that. Right? 